If you're gaming on a graphics card from a few years ago and have about $200 or so burning a hole in your pocket, AMD's Polaris Refresh RX 570 cards might be on your radar as a potential replacement. While there aren't a ton of them to choose from at this time, Usual Suspects, MSI, and Gigabyte both have multiple models on the market. And today we're going to pit two of them head to head to see which card is right for you. So first, let's introduce our combatants. For this video, both of the cards in question will sport the same base specs that are standard for the RX 570. They are both built on a 14 nanometer process with a 7000 megahertz effective memory clock operating on a 256 bit bus. They both require an 8 pin power connector and both manufacturers recommend a minimum power supply spec of 450 watts. You'll find the same 2048 stream processors in both along with 32 compute units. As always though, each company has done their best to make their products stand out from the crowd. This is the Gigabyte Aorus RX 570 4G. It sports the older Windforce cooler design from the RX 480, including twin 90mm fans, but adds on the RS backplate with copper cooling module we've seen on some of their high-end Pascal cards like the GTX 1080 Extreme Edition. The cooling plate is a love it or hate it affair, as the bare copper is exposed for the world to see. And although it undoubtedly provides some amount of utility and passive cooling, some people certainly would rather just have the backplate be entirely black. The base plate and copper heat pipes do make direct contact with all relevant components on the PCB, including the VRMs, memory modules, and of course the GPU die itself. The shroud has RGB lighting on the sides, which is controllable via Gigabyte's RGB Fusion software. However, as noted before with the copper backplate, there are color accents on this card that you can't change. In this instance, in addition to the copper, the shroud has touches of orange in some spots. The stock configuration of this card is gaming mode, which clocks the Polaris chip at 1280 megahertz. If you'd rather tack on a small overclock without any real fuss, overclock mode can be engaged, which bumps the core to 1295 and the memory to 7100. All of my pre-overclock testing with this card was done on the stock gaming mode settings. That looming shadow behind the Aorus card is MSI's version of the 570, the Gaming X. Those of you familiar with the now infamous MSI Twin Frozer Cooler design will instantly recognize this card as an MSI product, as there's no hiding that trademark black and red scheme. Although they do offer special colored editions of this cooler on some of their cards like the GTX 1070 Quicksilver, if you don't want to pay a premium for color neutrality, you're unfortunately stuck with at least some amount of red in your system. I've asked MSI for years to start making this cooler design in an all black variety as their standard card, or even maybe black and white or black and gray or something along those lines. I've even gone so far as to try to paint away the red in some instances, which is now made much more difficult by the fact that these little doodads over here are translucent and have LED backlighting. This particular card sports 8mm copper heat pipes contacting the GPU base plate, but no other direct contact to the PCB components. There is a separate heat sink over the PWMs, however. The back of this card is bare, which is somewhat disappointing, but the front of the shroud sports twin fans that are slightly larger than their RS counterparts. The MSI logo on the side of the card has RGB capabilities, which I'm actually a little bit puzzled by given the bold red accents all over the place here. The Gaming X RX 570 comes with three separate performance profiles. As with Gigabyte's offering, the standard mode here is gaming, which puts the frequency at 1281 MHz. OC mode is 1293 MHz, and silent mode is 1244 MHz. So it looks like both of these cards stack up pretty similarly as far as specs go, and that's to be expected given that they're based on the same chip. Surprisingly though, there were measurable differences in gaming performance between them at both stock and overclock speeds, and even the OC amounts themselves differed greatly. With both cards installed, the stock fan curves left in place, and frequencies sitting at 1280 and 1281 MHz respectively, the MSI card put up better numbers than the Aorus card. Granted, the differences are small, but they are repeatable and consistent. When I fired up MSI Afterburner, however, and spent some time dialing in manual overclocks, the Gigabyte card was much more receptive to my tweaking, allowing it to clock significantly higher than the Gaming X and outpace it at overclocked speeds. Here are the results of my testing. Wow, wow. 
So if one card performs better when stock and one card performs better when overclocked, is this a dead heat? Well, not quite. The MSI card stayed significantly cooler while under load in both scenarios, even though its bigger fans didn't make a noticeable difference in noise levels. While the RS hit the mid 60s at load when stock and mid 70s at load when overclocked, the Gaming X was hovering around 60 degrees Celsius stock and only about 66 when overclocked. So on the one hand, we have this Gigabyte Aorus RX 570. It's smaller, overclocks better, runs a bit hotter, and has some copper and orange accents. On the other hand, the MSI RX 570 Gaming X is larger, performs better at stock speeds, is cooler, and is black and red. In a trend that I don't see reversing itself anytime soon, the choice comes down to what you value in a card. If you don't intend on overclocking your RX 570 and just want the faster performance, the MSI card is the clear winner. On the other hand, if you're a tinkerer and want to extract all the frames you can out of your investment, go with the RS brand. Or maybe you can't stay in black and red systems or think orange is for noobs. Whatever your criteria for choosing a graphics card, the decision is best left to you now that you know the facts on how these two mid-range options compare. Either way, when you're looking at your screen during 1080p gaming and those frame rates are sky high, you'll be happy that either of these cards is powering your next build. So what do you guys think of the RX 570? Are you considering building with either of these variants? Let me know down below in the comments. Also, don't forget to like this video if it helped you out and get subscribed to the channel if you're not already. Thanks for watching guys as always, and I'll see you next time.